And we begin with some breaking news that is just coming in. Pakistan has offered consular access for Kulbushan Jadav, the Indian national languishing in Pakistani jail for almost two hours on Monday. The announcement was made by the Pakistani Foreign Ministry. However, they are yet to clarify if it is an unhindered access. Remember, Pakistan made a similar offer last time, but India had rejected it on the grounds that it wasn't in line with the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. As per sources, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs has said that it will study Pakistan's offer and that their position on the access has been clarified. It wants nothing short of unimpeded and unrestricted access. Our principal diplomatic correspondent, Siddhan Sibbal, is joining us on the phone. And we also have uh, Mr. Brahma Chalani, Professor of Strategic Studies at the Center for Policy Research, joining in. Uh, Professor Chalani, stay with us. Let me quickly begin with uh, asking Siddhan Sibbal. Uh, Siddhan, talk to us. What is the latest uh, that is that you're hearing from the Indian government sources? Well, uh, Krishna, the latest is that Pakistan has offered uh, counselor access for Kulbushin Yadav. Whether it's partial or full counselor access, that's the big question. India hasn't accepted the offer as of now. It's, it's going through the proposal and the meet, of course, as you have told, our viewers will happen at 12 uh, noon Pakistan standard time uh, and is roughly according to a proposal last for two hours. But what's the difference uh, between uh, the first proposal and this proposal? The first proposal was sent on... 30th of July, it was rejected by New Delhi. Uh, there is uh, no details about this proposal, but the last time uh, Islamabad sent the proposal, it had two riders. One, that a Pakistani security personnel will second, that there will be CCTV cameras to record uh, the entire movement or the conversation which happens between Kulbhushan Yadav and Indian diplomat who will be present, which, against, uh, which goes against the basic norms of council access, uh, which is given to anyone. So is, is this time... Pakistan offered a, a full council access and unimpeded council access is the big question and only if it's a full council access, New Delhi is bound to accept it. Right, uh, that's uh, Siddhan Sibbal, our principal diplomatic correspondent, joining us on that big story that's uh, breaking. Let's now take this across to Professor Brahma Chalani. Uh, 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 Professor Chalani, uh, what is the answer to that big question? Do you think, let's, let's hazard a guess over here, do you think that this is an honest uh, proposal from Pakistan? Well, let's uh, keep in mind that uh, the International Court of Justice held Pakistan to be in complete breach of the Vienna Convention by denying India consular access to Kulbushan Yadav. And the International Court of Justice has put the matter back before Pakistan. It has ordered Pakistan to provide consular access and more importantly to review the sentence uh, the conviction and sentence uh, that um, you know that a military court awarded to Yadav. So the the ball is in Pakistan's court. At a minimum, it has to provide consular access. Yes, so and, and, and unimpeded, unrestricted at that, because India will have none of uh, anything else. It's made it very clear that at this stage, even if this proposal, the second proposal for Pakistan, ends up being something that does not provide unimpeded and unrestricted access, India will certainly not take it up. Certainly, why should India accept a proposal that involves impeded access to Yadav? That would be of no use to India. Yadav has been in custody for so long, was abducted from Iran, brought to Pakistan by ISI, and then convicted in a military court. Let's be clear on one thing. Kulbushan Yadav case is not a legal case. It's a political case. And the only answer to this uh, issue is for India to repay Pakistan in the same coin. In other words, if Indian intelligence were to abduct an ICE officer from a third country, then that officer can be traded for Yadav's freedom. There is no other choice because India went to the International Court of Justice, and the International Court of Justice put the ball back in the court of the violating party. It upheld India's contentions, but the ball was put back in the court of the violating party. Therefore, the ICJ proved that there is no legal recourse for India, that the way to deal with this issue is to do what Pakistan has done to an Indian officer. India, Indian intelligence can easily pick a, pick a Pakistani intelligence officer from a third country and then trade that officer for Yadav's freedom. Right. 
Uh, at this stage, as you're rightly telling us, that uh, the ball is in Pakistan's court. Pakistan has a clear directive from the International Court of Justice. It should have uh, given unimpeded, unrestricted access as the first offer, which didn't happen. They said that uh, there will be a Pakistani diplomat being present uh, when uh, uh, you know, Indian authorities and uh, Kulbushan Jadav are uh, engaged in talks, and India clearly said no to that. Uh, do you think at this time uh, Pakistan will be forced uh, to follow the ruling of the International Court of Justice? Well, the, you, you, everybody knows that Pakistan is not a normal state. It's an abnormal state where the military and the intelligence call the shots. There's, there's supposedly an elected prime minister, but the prime minister is the puppet of the military establishment. So in this abnormal state, to expect that this abnormal state will follow international norms and rules is to expect too much. We have seen in recent days what Pakistan has been doing. It has been engaged in provocative actions, provocative behavior. It has actually downgraded diplomatic relations with India. It has snapped trade and transportation links with India and is threatening a final war against India. So given the conduct of Pakistan, there is no way that you can expect that state to follow international norms and rules in relation to Kulbushan Yadav case. Well, I was asking you this question because uh, right now Pakistan is uh, under the entire world's radar, you know, be it the Financial Action Task Force or the U.S., uh, it is facing complete isolation at the United Nations. Uh, you know, on the international stage, uh, these are extremely uh, crisis-ridden times for Pakistan. One way of fixing things is to, uh, to implement uh, what a global body like the World Court has asked it to. Well, that's the uh, view from India that Pakistan is under a lot of pressure. But the Pakistani deep state believes that right now India is under pressure, tremendous pressure internationally because of India's action in reorganizing the state of JNK. And that is why the Pakistani deep state is engaged in provocative actions and in provocative rhetoric. They believe this is the opportunity to shine an international limelight on India's actions in JNK. So, there is, so right now, Pakistan will not seek to moderate its behavior. It will seek to actually mount more pressure on India. And Kulbushan Yadav was just a, just a convenient peg for Pakistan to increase pressure on India. Professor Brahma Chalani joining us on this broadcast for that big story that is breaking. Thank you, uh, Professor, for being with us here on this broadcast.